Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Family. What's going on? This is Shay Bynes, founder and chief fire igniter of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur. And honestly, I wasn't even sure if I was going to go live today because the last few days have been so wild that it's hard to, um, it's been hard to put into words, it's been hard to articulate. I just want to talk just a few minutes today. We'll see how all this goes, but I just want to share about how God doesn't fit in any of any of our boxes, not a one. There's not one box that you can create that God fits in. And I was thinking about how if every podcast episode that we have, we've been doing this podcast for five years, and in every podcast episode, I'm saying, you know, our goal here is to inspire you to do business with an awesome and limitless God. And my prayer is always that, that those are never just words to me, that when I say doing business with an awesome and limitless God, that I continue to get greater and gra- greater and greater revelation about what both of those words mean, what it means to be to do business with an awesome God, what it means to do business uh, with a limitless God. I got to tell you, I was I was speaking at a retreat. One of one of our team members, uh, Dr. Tony Robinson, she's the prophetic strategist for KDE and also one of our Igniter's mentors, and she was hosting a retreat. And in Fort Lauderdale, right here in my local city. And so anyway, she had asked me to speak at it on the Friday. I think it was Friday. And <laughs> Sophie says it's way too early in Australia. <laughs> and, um, and so she invited me to speak. And so, you know, I never know, I don't, you never know what to expect when you, when you go to uh, retreats. And quite honestly, anything that Dr. Tony Robinson does, you just have no idea what to expect when you get there. But anyway, I got to tell you that 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 day, that that Friday that I spoke, the Saturday, the next day, we had baptism. I, I experienced some like crazy stuff in God during my own baptism. And then in the days to follow all the way up to yesterday, I've encountered God in so many unusual ways that I've never experienced God before that are hard to articulate in words. And it's a constant reminder. God's constantly reminding me that it's like, no matter what you think you know of me, I'm more. There's nothing that you, there's no revelation of God that you can have that gives you a fullness of revelation in him. And I think the the reason why this is so important is because when we walk into this thing called kingdom driven entrepreneurship, and we're truly operating off of this idea that I am, let's break it down kingdom driven entrepreneur. My entrepreneurial endeavors are driven, meaning they're motivated by and propelled forward by the kingdom. I'm motivated by seeing an advancement of the kingdom of God on earth, right? Just to see his glory revealed on the earth. I'm motivated by that. And I'm propelled forward by seeking first the kingdom of God, right? So if we're saying we're kingdom driven entrepreneurs, then it means that we have to have an understanding of the king. And it means that if we're doing business with the king, we're doing business with an awesome and limitless God. It literally means that there's no limits. The other day I was sharing how, you know, how our businesses should be a sign and a wonder on the earth. And I think if we just take a moment to like really dream with God about what would it look like for my business to be a sign and a wonder in the earth? If you actually meditated on that for a little bit. You might be surprised at the answers. We get so caught up in the day-to-day, what we need to get, you know, this is what I need to get done for my business. These are my goals. This is what's going on. This is what, I, this is what I'm gonna do and this, that, that, and the other. And I gotta go get this strategy and that strategy and all of these things. But do you ever actually really sit and think about what it means to do business with an awesome and limitless God? This is a grace over grind message right here. Do you ever actually like take a second to think about it? Do you ever take a second to think about what, God, what would it look like for this thing that you've shown me, this business that I've got, what would it look like to astound the people around me where this thing absolutely reveals your character, your character, which is awesome and limitless? 
right? Man, this weekend I'm at this retreat. I, you know, I, there was things that went down that I've, I've heard stories about, but I've never seen with my own eyes, you know, personally. And they're yet supposed to be everyday things. So, for example, there was a sister there who had been dealing with chronic back pain. You know, um, chronic back pain since she had a, I think, a kidney transplant or a kidney surgery or anything, something like that. And there's been many things that she had been healed from, many things. And, uh, but she had one thing left on her list, which was that, man, I'm just really believing God for healing in my back, you know? And, and what happened was it turned out that her legs were uneven, like her legs were not of the same exact length. And so as she was prayed for, like her, her leg grew, <laughs> her leg grew to, to, for them to be even. And then when she stood up, she was able to touch her toes for the first time without any pain and then realized she had no pain in her back and was completely overwhelmed by the goodness of God. That's not even supposed to be a surprise. That's not even supposed to be a, oh, wow, <laughs> well, look at what God did. We're supposed to be like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Praise God. But it's actually the nature of who he is, right? And there's so much, I mean, that's just a healing example, but even in the context of business, which by the way, there can be healing examples in business. there can be healings that happen at your business event. There can be healings that happen inside of your, your, your store. I mean, when you're just an awesome and limitless God, I really think we have to break out of a box of thinking that this business is just about this is just about how much profits can I make and how much profits can I make? And I'm telling you, it's a, it's, I wasn't sure I should do a live today. Okay. Here's what happens. People will say I'm kingdom focused, but what they'll do is they'll go do business without God. They're not doing it with God. They're just doing business. They're going after They're They're hustling. They're grinding. They're chasing after the dollar. They're following the gurus, the hurus, the whatever, whatever's. And they're, and they're building up and storing up and building this amazing business and saying, now I'm going to take this money and I'm going to do something amazing for the kingdom of God. And their actual way of going, they actually didn't even experience God's best. It was like, oh, I'm doing this for God. I, I'm doing this for God. No. If we're talking about experiencing his best, if you're talking about a business that's a sign and a wonder in the earth, if you're talking about a business that reveals his character of being an awesome and limitless God, then it has to be done with him, not just for him, but with him, right? If we do things with him, then we don't miss out on these amazing opportunities, not just in the operations of our business when it comes to strategy and, you know, how, how you know, goals and, 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 you know, ideas for products and services or clarification on how to execute on something or whatever, not just in those ways, but in our everyday interactions with those we encounter through what we do in business. Do you realize that in the marketplace, in those cases, sometimes the only, the only encounter with the character of God someone will experience is in the context of the marketplace, in the context of commerce and doing, because they're not stepping foot in anybody's church or they've been in somebody's church and they got hurt or they went into somebody's church and just dealt with so much hypocrisy, this hypocrisy that they decided to leave church or they're just never ever gonna walk in a church, right? There's so much opportunity just for us to be demonstrators of who he is just in our interactions with people. And there's also the opportunity for our business in and of itself because it was done with God that it you've experienced his grace in such a way that it, it, it testifies of who he is. Nobody can look at it and say, John did that. No one can look at that and say, oh man, that's Sophie. That's Sophie. She's amazing. Cause you know, you see how man, oh, she's such an amazing hard worker. And she just, man, man, she's on her grind, man. And she just made it happen. That's not a testimony of who he is. It's, it's a testimony of Sophie's hard work. So 
if we're serious about this thing, which I believe we should be, if we're serious about this thing, then we should actually take the time to actually dream with God, to, each, to ask God, you know, what does it look like for my business to be a sign and a wonder to the people around me, a sign and a wonder to me? Listen, some of the stuff I've experienced in the last few days that I can't even artic articulate like yesterday, I, it's like I have to experience, we have to experience more of who he is for ourselves so that we can express the fullness of who he is to the people around us. If we don't, it's way more important for us as a kingdom driven entrepreneur to grow in our relationship with the king. It's way more important for us to do that because it's from that, it's from that place that all the goodness comes out. And then it becomes an expression of who he is. And it becomes an example of, you know, of his nature, an example of him. Right. So there's nothing more important, to be honest, there's really nothing more important than our intimacy with him and being even more secure in our identity of who we are in him and in whatever assignment that we have. All the other stuff. It's good, but everything flows from there. So if we're, if we're so busy trying to figure out how I'm going to make money doing this, how I'm going to make money doing this and how I'm going to do this or whatever, and, and you're over there focused on those things, but you don't have your foundation. I'm talking to kingdom driven entrepreneurs. Now this is the KDE page, right? I'm talking to kingdom driven entrepreneurs. If you're going to be a kingdom driven entrepreneur and experience God's best and have a greater kingdom impact in the marketplace, there is nothing more important than growing in your knowledge of how awesome and limitless he is and being willing to experience that and to stretch yourself in faith to stretch yourself because he's always giving you an invitation to stretch yourself to experience more of him in your business now and accepting those invitations to be bold enough to say oh wow here's an example to learn about kingdom math today oh wow oh wow that's a really big project that you just put in for me. I have no idea how that's going to get done. Oh, I don't have the skills for that really, Laura, but you really placed this on my heart. I don't know how that's going to happen, but okay. Oh, wow. You really put on my heart that, you know, this, this business, the store of mine is going to just be like a, a place of healing for people in my community. And I don't, and, and I don't know how in the world that's going to happen, but he's always giving us an invitation to experience more of who he is and for us to stretch our faith and just dare to believe, to dare to believe that he is who he says he is and who we say we believe he is. And the more and more that we grow in our knowledge of that, not just up here, but here, which happens through experience, the more we do that, the more that we see our businesses thrive from the kingdom and to become an example of who he is, okay? I'm going to go in the comments and see if there's any questions or anything. I'm just like, this is different. If you're doing, like, if you're saying you're a kingdom-driven entrepreneur, I'm talking to kingdom-driven entrepreneurs. If you're going to say you're a kingdom-driven entrepreneur, then you just have to accept that this is just, it's just different. It just is. It's completely counter-cultural. I did a post yesterday, last night, <laughs> on Facebook because, man, because sometimes I get agitated because people will give me feedback about, well, gosh, well, what about the money? Well, what about this? And how, you know, well, are you teaching this too? And you know, the, you know, the people need this too, and you know, the body needs this or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, all well, that's really interesting and good. But if we are kingdom driven motivated by seeing an increase of the increase of the kingdom of God and propelled forward by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then if we believe what Matthew 6 and 33 says, it says all these things, all things will be added. I really ought to just bring the whole thing up. We should read from like Matthew 6 all the way from a handful before 33 to a handful below 33. If we truly believe that, when we're driven by other things and motivated by other things and obsessed over the other things, we miss out. We're missing out on God's best. God's like, you don't even have to worry about that stuff. 
Like that's basic. You're in the kingdom, that's basic. Like you're majoring on minors. There's so much more to experience in me. There's so much more to express of me on the earth. And, and you focused on the stuff that like, I take care of like birds and flowers and stuff. And, and you over there, you focused on that. We have to move past that. It's not even about that. That's basic. That's basic when we, when we enter the kingdom, that's basic. And that's how a lot of entrepreneurs operate because they're not really operating. I'm, I'm talking about believers too. They're not operating out of a space of really truly flowing out of that truth. So if you're going to be a kingdom driven entrepreneur, it's just going to have to look different and praise God that it does look different and praise God that that difference is his best. And that difference is amazing. Okay. Uh, let me see. Are there any questions on anything? Uh, hi, Coral. Hi, Phil. Hi, Yvonne. Yvonne says, thanks for doing this Facebook Live. You needed to hear this. Awesome. Glad that you're here. Erica says she needs a consistent reminder of how countercultural it is. Beth says, I find myself asking God if he sees me as a kingdom-driven entrepreneur, and if there's something missing or off to please show me. Okay, so I need to focus on intimacy with him and be sure and confident and rest in that. I love it. Yeah, I mean, you're... The plate, your posture of your heart is the posture of your heart. If your heart is, it's okay to grow. It's always a journey to grow in walking out what it looks like to be a kingdom driven entrepreneur. But, but it starts with like the decision that this is my desire. This is my desire to be, to be uh, driven by, motivated by, and to be propelled forward by the kingdom. And once you've made that decision, once you've accepted yes, once you've said yes to that invitation, there begins the journey. But there's a constant growth when you start. I was just telling Angie, our COO, earlier how one of the things that I, there's so many areas that I, I really believe God for and I'm really stretching and, and, uh, and experiencing more of him. And then there's other areas that I'm like, oh, I desire, like I can see someone operating in just like this amazing revelation of the truth in a particular area of the things of God. And I'm like, oh, I want to experience God. I want to, I want to have a revelation of God the way she has that revelation of God in that particular area, because that's an aspect of him that I haven't experienced for myself yet. There's always going to be those things. But as you're growing, once you've already said yes, after that, it's just the walk and to continue to grow, right? From year to year, from day to day, <laughs> from day to day. Quite honestly, when you when you make a decision that you're going to walk this thing out, you'll be surprised. At, you know, at, at some point, like time just gets real interesting. Like you just like I I was thinking about that yesterday, and here I am today, and I thought this was going to be three months out, but it's like I just went through a quantum leap. I was like I went through a time warp or something. What's going on? Cause God's like not playing around. He's not playing around. And I'm excited about what God's doing. I'm excited about just a movement of people that that's our heart. Because when we see, I mean, you talk about seeing just the goodness of God in ways that people haven't even experienced him. Because the only experience they have is someone trying to tell them you know, beating them upside the head and telling them what they're doing wrong with their life, right? They're, they're not experiencing the character of God. They're not, and they're not having an encounter with him. And that includes a lot of believers. There are so many believers who haven't really had an encounter with whom they believe. And so part of this journey as a kingdom driven entrepreneur is growing ourselves in that and also being a testimony, a living, walking, breathing testimony to your brothers and sisters in Christ and everybody else, right? To grow in the knowledge of him. Let me see if there's any questions. Uh, let me see. Okay. I've had so much prophecy over my business and it seems no matter how hard I push, I don't get kingdom breakthrough. It's been eight years of pushing the boundaries. Oh, let's talk about that. 
let's talk about it. All right. So you've had a lot of prophecy over your business and it seems that no matter how hard I push, how hard I push that I don't get kingdom breakthrough. Can I tell you something? I don't know how to pronounce your name. Natalia, I think. You don't push to get kingdom breakthrough. That's the grind. You don't have to push for kingdom breakthrough. This is a part of walking in the rest of God, okay, that we don't actually have to push. There's things that come forth. There's prophetic words that come forth. And prophetic words, they're awesome, right? Thank God for them. But a lot of times, you know, you're getting a portion. You're getting a picture. You're getting an incomplete picture. You don't know the timing of that thing. You don't even – and sometimes it's just even the accuracy of the thing, right? So – when you're talking about the prophetic, it's like, you know, you write those things down and see what God really confirms in your heart and then, you know, write those things down. I mean, Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, we're, we'll have our seventh anniversary this fall. Man, if you don't listen, from the day we started Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, I've got prophetic words going back since 2012 for this thing. Some of those things I've seen come to pass. Some of them I have not. So, you know, it's, it's just part of it. It's just part of it, but you don't have to push. That's the key. That's what I really want to make sure you don't have to push for breakthrough. Breakthrough doesn't come from your pushing breakthrough comes from a position of rest. It comes from a position of rest. If you haven't rest, read grace over grind yet, please read grace over grind. God's going to speak to you through it. So good. Any other questions? Okay, I don't see any other questions. So, yeah, you know, just operate out of rest. Operate out of, out of you know, his pace. I have to tell you, you know, it took five and a half years to begin to see levels of breakthrough that I was believing for in 2012. And that took five years, five and a half years. And then now in the midst of it, over the past little over a year, um, I'm seeing things that God's like, you haven't even seen anything yet. Like you think, you think you've seen something? You haven't even seen anything yet. So it's time, it's process. It's, there's, there's so many aspects to it. There's so much. So just, you know, keep going. Keep going to the glory of God. Keep going. Don't give up. I saw some more comments come in here, so I was just about to see. Let's see. Uh, okay, a lot of people are – okay, that resonated. Breakthrough comes from a place of rest. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you wanted to do a Facebook Live with your own agenda, but <laughs> Yep, yep. Facebook Lives, everything with his agenda will always end up better than what we'll do with ours. His agenda every time. The king's agenda every time is better than the best agenda we could ever possibly come up with. Exchanging our plans and exchanging our dreams, ex exchanging our agendas for his is the absolute best thing that we can do as kingdom-driven entrepreneurs. It really is. All right. Let's see. So I think that uh, let me do a couple reminders, and then I'm going to go spend almost a half hour here. It's been good hanging out with you guys. A couple of things. Uh, Igniter's mentoring program. Uh, we right now, let's see, the next round starts July 1st and registration is open for our Igniter's mentoring program. So if you want family, you want one-on-one -on -one mentorship and you want family and community surrounding you to walk this thing out, you want to join Igniter's mentoring program. You can get the details at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash mentoring. Right now, there's a two-pay option up until the end of this month, and then it goes to the one-pay option, which is $4.95 through the end of June, and we get started on July 1st. But I got to tell you, whether it's igniters or it's whatever, community, if you're going to do this thing called Kingdom Driven Entrepreneurship, you need community. And I don't mean you just need a community of believers because you can have a community of believers that are doing business a completely different way. 
If you're going to be a kingdom driven entrepreneur, then you need to surround yourself with some kingdom driven entrepreneurs because every step of the way, there is a distraction, a something or whatever to when, even when you have every intent to stay on a particular path, it is so easy. It is so easy to just slip back into old ways of doing things. It is so easy because it is so deeply ingrained to do business in our own strength because that's the way we learned to do business in our own strength, to, 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 to grind, to grind, to, to hustle, to make it happen. Okay. And even if you're not like, a, I'm not grinding and I'm not forcing it to make it happen. It's still another level to say it's kingdom driven. It's still another level to say, I'm doing this thing. I'm putting the King's agenda first. I'm doing this thing, really believing God as a source of full provision, which shows up a whole lot differently when you're doing business that way than when you're doing business another way. So you really want family around you. You want mentorship. You want family. Even if you didn't want the mentorship, you should want some family, some like-minded, like-hearted family around you because we're in this thing together. We really are. This is, this is like a remnant. Like if you're, we're not, there's like the pool of entre, all of entrepreneurs. Then there's a pool of believers in business in general. They're like, I'm, I believe in God. I'm a Christian and I happen to do business, right? There, there's that. And then there's a, a lot of believers who are like, I'm doing business for God. I'm doing it this way. And then I'm going to pour all this money in the kingdom and I'm going to do business this way. It's a remnant to say that you are motivated by seeing an advancement of the kingdom of God on earth while you're doing business, not only at the end of the day when you've made all your profits doing it however way, and to be propelled forward by seeking first the kingdom of God. That's a completely different conversation. And that's a remnant and not a huge one. So that's all. Kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash mentoring. That's where you can go to join Igniter's mentoring program. And for those who want to, okay, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, for those who want to join us, we have KDE Live. We just had one in April in Georgia, and it was amazing. And we're doing it again in October in Kansas City. Uh, I think it's October 11th through the 13th, if I remember correctly. It's somewhere of 10th through the 13th. And we're going to be in Kansas City. Registration is open. So if you want to spend time with us face-to-face -face in Kansas, Kansas City, then you can get registered. Right now we have early bird. The early, early bird <laughs> registration is happening, I think, until the middle of June. And after that, registration prices go up. So if you want to join us in Kansas City, now is the best time to get registered. Okay. I think, let me go one more time, one more time to the questions. Okay. The question is, Shay. What is the balance between working hard, non-grind, and his rest and grace? So working, so when we talk about working hard, we like to talk about working diligently, right? Like working diligently is not is not grinding. So we like to we like the idea of being diligent, doing our work unto the Lord, all of that. We like that. That's good. And his rest and his grace, that's actually a whole nother message, honestly. So I actually won't be able to do justice to that answer in the time that I have right now. I am going to say that if you, I think you, no, 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 no. You've read Grace Over Grind already. So I have to get back to you. I'm gonna have to get back to you on this question because it's gonna take me longer to answer than I've got right now. And let me see. Oh, thank you, Angie. I forgot to say how to get information about KDE Live. To register for KDE Live, uh, kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash live. Okay, that's it. I have got to go. I love you guys so very much and stay tuned. More to come. All right. Take care, you guys.